Hello everybody, welcome to the Business of Business. My name is Joel and let's get right to it. Recently, you may have heard about number one Elon Musk fanboy, Leo Kaguin. He's also Tesla's number three stockholder. But I think more impressive is the person that he got his start with. This is Tai Lee. She is the founder and CEO of SHI International and the focus of our video today. We're going to try to learn as many lessons as we can from her journey. So let's get to business. My name is Tai Lee. Um, I was born to a Korean parents, but because I was born in Thailand, my parents decided to name me Tai. Moving around the world with her family, always planning her role for survival in case of a North Korean invasion. Lesson one, be self-aware. Something that characterizes Tai Lee is her incredible self-awareness. From a young age, she understood what she was capable of, but most importantly, how to navigate around her limitations at the time. With my strengths and weaknesses, a lot of weaknesses in language skills. At age 15, Tai and her sisters moved to America to live with a family friend. My father decided to ship off his two eldest daughters because he felt that I, we could have the best education and best prospects. For the first year, the freshman class of uh, Amherst College had women and that was 1976. So I was very lucky to have gone to a college then. Ty becomes part of the first freshman class to include women. Wanting to stay away from having to give presentations and writing speeches, she chose to double major in economics and biology. Easy. So I felt very insecure. And most of all, I did not really, I was not that familiar or comfortable with American culture. But I decided that that would not inhibit me from cultivating and really crafting the most ambitious goal possible for myself. Ty sees her life as a hundred year block, broken down into different decades. Her plan was simple. My entire 20s was going to be a preparation to launch this entrepreneurship. So, you know, all throughout my 30s, I was able to really singularly focus on making SHI successful. And then at 39, I had my first son. And then at age 44, after my divorce, I chose to be a single mom. All of this she was able to accomplish, but only by adjusting to how the timeline played out, which was not in the order that she intended. So have a plan, but while you're living in the present, you have to focus, focus, focus. It takes so much focus, and I didn't want distractions. Lesson number three, focus, focus, focus. Ty needed to focus more than anyone. She felt inadequate and that she was starting at a disadvantage. You can catch up. That's my message, she says. If you focus, if you know what you want and you put together a long-term plan, you can catch up in life, no matter where you are. So lesson number four, prepare for the long game. After college, Tai moved back to Korea for three years to work and live with her family in order to save up for her MBA. I had to save enough money to get enough tuition to study in a business school. So three years later, with $25,000 in savings, I went off, I came back to Massachusetts. And eventually became the first Korean woman to graduate from Harvard Business School. Preparation has been key in Tai's life. Thanks to her father prioritizing her education from early on, her nature of planning things, along with her language struggles, she had inadvertently acquired the tools to play the long game. I'm not really extraordinary, she says. I've been very lucky and I've been well prepared. I think low self-esteem was the source of motivation for me to work harder. It's an accumulation of directed energy, focus, and effort. And over decades, that can be very powerful. Lesson five, it's okay to make mistakes. Just as the next decade of her plan was beginning, Ty married Leo Koguin. That same year together, they purchased a failing software reseller, Software House. I knew nothing about technology, but we, we had an opportunity to purchase this company uh, for, for just a payroll. 
pretty much everybody left. So from day one, we became profitable. They needed to grow fast. So quickly, they added international to the name, giving it a little more gravitas with their customer base. And it actually worked. Um, I was initially 51% shareholder and a chairman of the board because I was already running a furniture company. And he, my husband, ex-husband, uh, <laughs> was the CEO. But very quickly, we flipped the role because actually it turns out that I enjoy running the company day to day. And he actually did not. Bonus lesson, set smart goals. In setting goals, you need to make it smart. So specific, <coughs> measurable, actionable, relatable, time bound. So smart goals. Sometimes a little bit of bad luck can also guide you the right way. Ty and Leo got denied a loan and they never thought about going after VCs. This helped them stay disciplined in order to maintain their organic growth. Had SHI gone after funding and spend their time and resources on that type of growth, who knows what might have happened. But they would have lost control of the company for sure, without any guarantees. Don't despair if you can't find an investor. In fact, one of the best things that happened to SHI is that we were not able to get bank credit line. We weren't able to raise money. All of our growth over the last 29 years had to be organic because if you're growing, you take an outside investor, pretty soon you'll find that you will lose control over not only the company, but, but many other aspects of your business. So second uh, advice that I give is don't, don't rush to uh, go public. You know, there, there's a whole lot of negative that comes from running a public company. So as long as possible, as long as you can, try to grow your company organically. You know, if you have a bright, promising idea, don't, don't be so eager to go and raise money and give all your shares away. Maybe, like myself, you would be grateful for not being able to raise money 30 years later. Lesson seven, empowered employees for the win. Ty knew nothing about technology, software, or anything in that field, but she knew how to manage people. She trained each of her salespeople to be their client CEO. Their job was to ensure that they received the best each time from SHI, to try to meet whatever needs they had. This mentality would give Ty the realization that her value was not in tech itself, but in customer service. You know how ridiculously helpful our teams can be. Simplifying the process for businesses deciding what to buy and how to implement and manage all of these IT products from all of these IT companies. At SHI, we consider ourselves experts in determining and implementing the right solutions for our customers. Lesson eight, find product market fit. Her customers enjoyed dealing with her sales force so much that they started to ask to buy their hardware from them. This was not what the company was set up to do, but it's what the customer wanted on a Friday. So they made this happen over a weekend. And as their customer base grew, their needs grew. And Ty made sure that SHI grew with them. The revenue was doubling yearly all through the 90s, and in 2000, they hid $1 billion in revenue. Lesson nine, change is good. As the business kept growing, Ty's marriage to Leo was deteriorating. Their marriage had produced a healthy baby and a very successful business, but it would come to an end in 2002. Ty, the CEO, owned 60%, while Leo, now just a chairman, still owns 40%. SHI saw business slow down in the 2000s. Our second decade was more challenging. It was um, in the year 2000, between the year 2019 uh, 2009, our addressable market shrank 80%. As the dot-com bubble burst and hit some more challenges during the global financial crisis. But after 2008, things started to change. Hal Jagger, a friend of Ty's, suggested that they start serving small and mid-sized businesses. That market was almost $200 billion in size and SHI wasn't serving it at all. To find out if the formula of world-class customer service would win in that market, Ty hired Hal. 
In 2015, in that market alone, SHI would make $1.6 billion in revenue. And Hal, he is now the vice president of SHI. Lesson 10, stay humble, but take risks. Over time, Tai Lee began to get the recognition she deserved, but this was all against her will, quite literally. In 2015, when Forbes reached out to her to notify her that she will be listed in the list of wealthiest self-made women, she instructed her team to do whatever possible to get her name removed, but they didn't succeed. She's received awards and is actively involved at Harvard Business School and Amherst. Besides her success, she's best known for her humility. Now she wants to enjoy life a bit more, stop working on weekends, and spend the most amount of time with her mom. My goal for the last couple of years, and actually hopefully for the next five to 10 years, is going to be to try to spend as much time with my mother, who is 84. A lot of her success she attributes to her father. He also graduated from Amherst, making him the first Korean native to do so then continuing his education at Columbia University before returning to Korea to help architect the post-Korean War five-year reconstruction plan. He passed away in 2012, just a few days after his 90th birthday. So let's break down the lessons that we have learned today from Tai Lee's story. Number one, be self-aware. Two, make a plan. Three, focus, focus, focus. Number four, prepare for the long game. Number five, it's okay to make mistakes. Number six, don't rush the growth. Number seven, empowered employees for the win. Number eight, find the product market fit. Number nine, change is good. Number 10, stay humble, but take risks. Our bonus lesson, the smart goals. Specific, make your goal specific and narrow. Measurable, define what evidence will prove you're making progress actionable, has practical value, relevant, it should align with your values and long-term objectives, time-bound, set a realistic but ambitious end date. Thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. Make sure to check out all of our other content. If you think there's a bootstrapper we should profile, let us know in the comment section below. Check out the description below for more links and information. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on all our upcoming content. Until then, go take care of business.